Hi, I'm Craig Matheson, pastor of Changing Lives Christian Church. I hope you're having a fantastic day today. I just want to share for a couple of minutes something they're offering you free of charge, postage paid, and that our ministry would like to send to you for us to be a blessing to you. And we want to thank you for watching us here on community television, as well as YouTube and through the internet as well in our church services. Each Saturday morning, what we do is we meet here at the church, a few members meet here at the church, and we are distributing these door hangers to approximately 100 people per week. So far, we've distributed about 1,100 of these. We're inviting people to our church. Our church is uh, fairly new, or at least this location where we're meeting is fairly new. Our church is actually 20 years old. I've been pastoring this church for approximately 20 years. We had a situation that had happened where, where we had a fire in Methuen. We're located in Methuen, Massachusetts on Prospect Street for years and about 18, uh, 19 years there and we had a, a, unfortunately an electrical fire and after that fire happened we were meeting at a hotel. Uh, our congregation was meeting at a hotel for approximately a year and then this building became available here at 17 Newcomb Street. We find it a real blessing to be here and so we purchased this particular building. We thank God for his providence in leading us here at this particular location. But what we're doing is we're inviting folks, being fairly new to this area, to our church. How we're doing that is we're, doing these, uh, we're passing these door hangers out, about 100 per week. And basically the door hanger says, you are invited to the new church in town, Changing Lives Christian Church. And then it gives information about our church and so forth. And what we're offering inside these door hangers as well is a free Gospel of John in Book of Romans booklet and a pocket calendar as well as a little Bible track. The little Bible track in here is called the Romans Road and it basically explains the plan of salvation for somebody that doesn't know how to be saved, how to accept Jesus as, as their personal Lord and Savior, how to have a relationship with God through Christ. It also has this Bible, the Good News Bible, the Gospel of John in the Book of Romans. And uh, inside it, it also explains the plan of salvation in the back of that book, little uh, Bible booklet, and also a little 2015 uh, pocket calendar as well. And so we're offering these for free. And what I felt led of the Lord to do is to have this little, um, this little spot here on our uh, community television station and so forth, and to offer you for free these materials. If you have not received one yet, we've pressed, um, distributed about 1,100 of these so far in the city of Havel. We're going every week, and again, we're, we're passing out about 100 of them, uh, distributing them to uh, each uh, folks' house here in the city of Havel. So if you'd like one, please, they're, they're totally free, postage paid. We're not going to put you on a mailing list or anything like that. The address is there on the screen. Either right, um, which is Changing Lives Christian Church, 17 Newcomb Street, Havel, Mass. The zip code is 01830. Or the email address is info at changinglivesChristianChurch.com. And if you send your, uh, your um, address, we can mail these out to you immediately. Or you could just give us a call at 978-373-7373. Again, postage paid, free of charge. We're not asking you for anything. We just want to be a blessing to you. And if you don't have a little Bible in your home and so forth, this would be a great opportunity to get one of these. And we want to thank you for watching here at Changing Lives Christian Church, our services, both on community television as well as YouTube and also throughout the Internet. God bless you. I just want to encourage each one of you that is here. I thank you for coming out. And I, I really, your presence really brings joy to me. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for being a part of God's blessings. Pastor Craig, who you've met earlier, has bestowed upon me the honor to bring you the message this morning. And I thank him. I thank his wife, Agnes. And I thank them for your prayers as well as I thank the church for your prayers. The message that I, I know, you know, can you sometimes just feel the presence of God? You know, last Sunday we had an awesome, awesome, awesome service. It all started off with, with, with the enthusiasm that we feel as we come in. And you know, it set the tone to Pastor Craig had to deliver. Now I feel that that, that, that mix in this crowd, and I'm like, I, God, I, I don't know if I can do it. <laughs> but I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. Not in my strength, but in his strength. 
And God has promised us that the best is yet to come. That our past is our future's better than our past. So if God did something big, get ready for overflow, church. Ooh, glory to God. The title of my message this morning is Stored Up Blessings. How many of us know that God has those stored up blessings, but sometimes we're not believing. It has taken too long. Breaks. One bad break comes to the next. We're tired. We're endured. And it still looks like it's not happening. It's happening to our best friend. We've been single forever and we're saying, God, when is my wife, when is my husband coming? And our best friend just called and said, can you be the maid of honor? And we're like, God, but I'm better looking than they are. He should have been for me. She should have been for me. If that would have been for you, it would not have fit. God has someone perfect for you. God has the perfect husband, the perfect wife for you. And sometimes we get tired of waiting and we grow frustrated. And the voices start to talk us out of God best. And sooner or later we're saying, well, it's never going to happen. I need you to rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. How many of us know that God is a merciful God? Oh, glory to God. So what may not seem fair, but how many of us know that God is fair? Things happen in this world that we don't understand. We can't dwell on it. We just got to put it in. I don't understand, but I know that God is making my path righteous. Oh, blessed be your name. When God laid out the plan for your life, church, he put everything you need to fulfill your divine destiny. So if you didn't get it, you don't need it. There's no need to walk around with jealousy. There's no need to walk around with resentment. Because God said, all the days of your life I will fulfill. Oh, glory to God. How many of us know that the Bible, this book is full of promises. Promises for you and for me. To be received today, not tomorrow. It's taking too long, but it can happen today. You can see a breakthrough in the name of Jesus right now. Next hour, tonight, tomorrow. Will you give up on your dreams, church? He's also lined up the right people. The light breaks. The right doors to open. Increase. Promotion. That baby that you've been praying for. A contract, a business. God has all lined it up. Store it up. I store it up a blessing. If you look at, at the word today in Psalms 31:19, God is saying, How great is your loving kindness. You have stored it up for those who fear you. God has stored up blessings for you. And it doesn't matter if you made a mistake. It doesn't matter if you've gone off course. God doesn't take away the blessing. He's holding it there. He stored it up for you when you get back on track. When your heart gets back in line with God, there's that blessing overflow in the name of Jesus. We see this principle, church, many times in Bibles, in Bibles, in the Bible. Remember Peter. He was a disciple chosen by Jesus himself. But when Jesus needed Peter the most, he denied that he even knew him. Oh, One would think that's the end of the story. But Jesus is a merciful God. Mercy. Peter went back to his old profession, went back to fishing. Remember when Jesus called him, he was fishing. He was confused. He knew that Jesus said that he would be crucified and then he would rise again, but he didn't see anything happening. So he went back to his profession of fishing. 
the, the scripture tells us that he was out fishing all night. Tired. Exhausted. He had given it his best. It was something he knew how to do. This is how it is in life, church. You're working hard. You're serving God. You're giving it your best. But still, it's not happening. I'm here to encourage you this morning and say, don't give up. There is plenty of fish for you. You have to learn how to do it a different way. Jesus appeared on the shore. Peter saw him, but he didn't recognize him. The man from the shore said, throw your nets on the other side. Amen. I could imagine the voices that Peter could have been saying. Who, who does he think he are? We're experienced fishers. We've been doing this all night. We're tired. We're exhausted. Sometimes, church, you have to throw your nets on the other side, even when it doesn't make sense. Even when you are experienced, you have been doing it for 20 years, you have been, but sometimes you have to pick up in the name of Jesus and say, I'm going to try it on the other side. Peter almost talked himself out of it. And at the last minute, he threw his net on the other side. There was so much fish. So much other fish on the other side. Church, there is fish on the other side of the net for you. Your best days are not behind you. They're still in front of you. If God did it for you before, he'll do it again. Don't give up on your dreams. He is the God that cannot lie. There is stored up blessings for you. Healing is coming in the name of Jesus. A breakthrough is coming in the name of Jesus. It can happen this minute. It can happen next year. It can happen in one month. You need to be ready. Isaiah, when Isaiah went and said, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. There was not one cloud in the sky. You got to believe it before it happens. You got to keep repeating it. When things look dark, you're saying, you know, I'm going to the valley now, but I'm not going to be here forever. Though I walk to the valley of death, I will fear no evil because I know that I know that I know that my Redeemer lives. Oh, glory to God. When you're certain you don't have to go around the press. You don't have to go around wondering if it's ever going to happen. God said it, and I believe it. Even Abraham. We see it in Abraham. God promised Abraham a child. Not just any child. What child? <laughs> It was an Ishmael. He promised the promised child. Abraham and Sarah got impatient like so many times we do. We get impatient. And we say, well, Lord, I'm going to help you. God doesn't need our help. Sometimes we get impatient and we get off course. Sarah talked, her husband Abraham into sleeping with their maid. The maid got pregnant, and she had a child, but it wasn't the promised child. God doesn't need our help, church. He need our faithfulness. He need our commitment. He need us to believe him that even though there are dark days, that we can still say, I know God promised it to me, and I know it's going to come through. But we're human beings. And how many of us know that God is not looking for perfect people? He wrote an entire book about our entire life long before we were born. In that book, he knew Peter would deny him. He knew you would sin. He knew I would sin. But his mercy endures it forever. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Imagine the drama. If you think there's drama in your household. Cyrus made in Sarah. 
an un, an, a child out of wedlock. Sarah got mad at Abraham. Abraham got, um, got mad at, the, um, the maid got mad at Abraham. Imagine the drama. Imagine in all that mess, you would think, okay, God would say, Abraham, you blew it. God had his blessing stored up because God promised it to him. Even in the midst of all of that dysfunction, God is still waiting for you, church. He still got his hand extended and saying, I have not forgotten about you. You can still come into your promised land. Don't get discouraged by disappointment. Don't worry about who's, 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 who's getting by and who's not getting by. God has an overflow for you, church. Oh, glory to his name. Are you feeling blessed this morning? Remember the, Samuel, the prophet Samuel. He went to Jesse's house to find the next king. Sometimes, church, we get discounted by our own family. But him and others know that God knows who we are. Aren't you happy this morning, church, that promotion doesn't depend on your boss? <laughs> Aren't you happy that who likes you or who likes you or who's in precedent or who's not doesn't depend on the favor of God? Jesse said, it can't be David. And he's too small. He's too ex inexperienced. He's not strong enough. And on and on and on. That didn't change God's mind. Samuel went to the first son. The oil defy gravity. It wouldn't pour. No one else can get your blessing, church. No one else. What God has stored up for you has your name on it. It takes the pressure off. You don't have to worry that, we got a, uh, that you got a new car, that God doesn't have enough to give you another car. I can never get what's for you. The oil defied gravity as he went down the row and he turned it upside down. But when he got to that promised child, it just flowed freely. In the name of Jesus. That stored that blessing that God had for David. It didn't fit any of the other children. Their father wanted it to be one of them. Samuel had no idea. He was obeying God. But what is meant for you, is for you. What God has stored up with the name Craig Matheson can't go to Agnes. It won't flow for her. It would flow for him. That husband that God has stored up for you can't go to someone else. It's for you. In the name of Jesus. That healing, that breakthrough, that new house, that new baby, it's all coming to you in the name of Jesus. Don't give up on your dreams, church. Don't allow yourself to be talked out of God's best just because you're going through a rough patch. You may be tired. You have worked hard to get where you are and suddenly you're dismissed. Don't give up. Your best days are still in front of you. You want to know, church, what this building is? A store that blessing from God. Oh, glory to God. Woo. You know, I, as I was talking to Sister Nelly this week, I, she was telling me a congregation was marching around this church, just claiming it and claiming it and claiming it and claiming it. Oh, it didn't go to them because it was a store that blessing for changing lives, Christian church. We came into an overflow church. And God is saying, I'm not done with you changing life. The best is yet to come. I need you to believe it. I need you to receive it. 
a stored up blessing. Look at it. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. A stored up blessing that we waited for 13, 14 years. That's just how God is. Out of, out of the blue. A breakthrough. A breakthrough. You know that if we listen to the accusing voices, we wouldn't be here this morning. Oh, you could never buy it. It's too expensive. Oh, you could never afford that. Oh, we don't have the budget. Oh, we don't. And we almost talk ourselves out of it. I almost talked myself out of it. I walked in. I said, no, this is not it. Pastor Craig called me. He said, we're going to move forward. I said, no, I don't think so. He said, okay, we're going to find a different place. And then God moved them on my heart. God can sometimes shake you and say, wake up. <laughs> God spoke to me in a dream. He said, what are you looking at? I have a stored up blessing for you. And I said, we're going to receive it in the name of Jesus. There's a stored up blessing for you, church. That breakthrough. I just don't, I, I'm not just here to give you nice words. I'm here to preach the word. It's all in here. The blessing. Of course, the blessing comes with our righteous living towards God. But even if we make mistakes, even if we fall off course, and we will because we're human beings, God is still waiting for us. God is still waiting to bless us. A stored up blessing. I want to bring your attention this morning to Matthew. Matthew 20. Remember the parable of the vineyard workers. Are you feeling blessed this morning? Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus tells the parable of the vineyard workers. He went out. Those days, people worked from sun up to sundown. So he went out in early in the morning and got some workers and said, Will you agree to work the entire day for one denarius, which is, I believe, equivalent of $20 for the entire day? That group of workers said, Sure. He went out later that day around noon. So the people that started off at 6 obviously had in a few hours. And he got another set of workers. And he said, would you agree to work for the same amount of money? He went out again around 3 o'clock in the afternoon and he brought in another set of workers. And he said, would you agree to work for one denarius? And they agreed. Around 5 o'clock, one hour before quitting, he found another group of workers and said, if you agree to work for one hour, for one denarius. When it came pay time, the workers, and as you would know, I'm, I could imagine Sister Nelly being there. <laughs> she would have protested loudly. I would have protested loudly. You may be, would protest loudly. I've been out in the sun all day working. And these just started, and they're going to make the same as me. They only work for one hour. She would have probably wanted a sue. God represents the landowner. He said, don't blame me for being generous. <laughs> The money is mine. How many of us know that favor is not fair? It's the mercy of God. I need to say it again. Favor is not fair. It's the mercy of God. 
The landowner said, don't be upset at me. It's my money. I'm paying you what you agreed to do. It's not my fault that Nelly is all burnt from the sun. I paid you what you agreed to work for. You said for the whole day. Similarly, Jesus is saying, you know what? I don't care when you started. I don't care if you came late. I'm not docking your pay. I'm here to bless you. I want to give you a stored up blessing. I don't care if you started late. I don't care if you made mistakes. What I care about is that you come to me. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what you've done. God wants us to have a righteous heart towards him. We have a generous God. Favor is not fair. It's the mercy of God. It's interesting how it's very easy for us to be critical of others. It's very easy for us to give up on our dreams when things seem like they're not happening. When it looks like it's taking too long. We're tired. We worked all night. And we're still not seeing that breakthrough. God has a store up blessing for you. A breakthrough. Something that you never dreamed of. Just like this church. We didn't always, it took us a while to get here. As the song says, you don't know what I've been through. Even Jesus felt tired from the weight of the cross. Even Jesus needed help to carry the cross because he knew that we get weary, we get tired. It's sometimes tiresome for a pastor to carry the weight of the congregation. But God has always sent in someone there to hold his arms up. Will you be that somebody? Would you work hard in the wine yard? It doesn't matter if you start in late. It doesn't matter where you are. What matters is where you're going. Often, just before the breakthrough, you feel the heavy opposition. Just before you're about to get that breakthrough, just before the harvest, just before you hear the sound of the abundance of rain, bad things start to happen to you. Because Satan, no, you're coming into your breakthrough. You're coming into your harvest. Amen? It's always said, when you face the most opposition, you just got fired. Things are not working out. Membership is down in the church. We're not taking in much tides. Satan knows that a breakthrough is coming. And he's trying to get discourage you, get you upset, get you to leave, get you to abandon your dreams. I'm here to say, in the name of Jesus, bound and rebuke him and send him back to hell. Amen. You know what? You're about to come in to your store that blessings. Oh, glory to God. How many of us know that we too can lift our hands and say no weapon formed against me shall ever prosper in the name of Jesus? Glory to God. We have the power. We have the power in the words. Don't think you're blessed. Say I'm blessed. I'm blessed and highly favored. I know that not everything in my life is working out the way I know, but I know that I know that my best days lies ahead of me, not in back of me. I know that just before my breakthrough, I'm going to face my heavy opposition, but there's more on my side than on the name. And Satan, there is more for me 
than there is against me. Greater is he. Oh, glory to God. Right here in the Psalms, we see this promise. Oh, glory to God. Psalms 112, 2 says, His children will be powerful in the land. You, me, will be powerful in the land. <laughs> it didn't say may be powerful. Will be powerful in the name of, but you have to believe it. If you walk around with a mentality of poor old me, nothing good happens to me, well, you're inviting mediocrity. God has stored up blessings for you far beyond your wildest expectations. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. I have seen this God working throughout my own personal life. You know, as I, I immigrated from Honduras. I came when I was 19 or 20, 20. And I know I wanted to go to law school. But it was a distant dream, you know. And I almost talked myself out of it. And I tried. There's a, there's a, Entrance exam to go into law school that I had never, I've never take, taken an aptitude test in my life. Um, because when I got accepted into St. John's, they didn't require um, that I, for, for my bachelor's degree, they didn't require that I take a SAT exam. So I had no idea what aptitude tests were. So my friend said, you know, I was kind of just following. And my friend says, huh, let's go to law school. I said, great, that's what I want to do. How you start studying for the LSAT? I'm like, what's that? <laughs> uh, and I said, oh, I'll do fine. He said, oh, I'm studying. I said, okay, I'll do fine. I went to take the LSAT, I think, in 1989. It was the scariest thing I've ever done. I was literally lost. I had no idea. I, was, I thought I had landed on Mars. <laughs> I just wanted to get out of there as quickly as possible. Clearly with my scores, I applied to every law school I could possibly think of and I got the same rejection letter. No, no, no. I, had, I worked at the time for a major law firm in New York City and I had partners writing letters, but everyone's, for three years, I got no, 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 no. Oh, glory to God. But how many of us know that God had a stored up blessing with my name on it? Amen. How many of us know, I lived in New York at the time, and I never dreamed I would be in New, Hampshire, in New England. But how many of us know that God knows what's best for us? God brought me to the, the third year after I, I was just about to give up. I applied to school in Massachusetts. They accepted me. And I said, you know what? I'm packing everything and we're off to Massachusetts. I didn't know anybody here, but I knew Jesus. Took law school for three years, struggled. I found this church. I started attending. In my life, my Christian life began to grow. Had I been in New York, maybe that wouldn't have happened. But God had already written it in the book of life. Even as I was getting ready to take yet another exam, aptitude, one of the worst ones, what it's called, the bar exam, what, the exam that you need to pass to get your license to practice law. So you can go to law school and get a, a, a JD, which is a Juris Doctor's degree. But if you don't pass that bar exam, you will never practice. You just have a degree. You won't be able to practice. So it's, it's a very prestigious thing to have. Just like if you went to medical school and you didn't pass the, the, the board exam, you can't practice. Um, you may have all the knowledge, but you can't practice medicine. 
I'm telling you that these exams are hard. And I, I'm now remembering <laughs> that LSAT exam and I'm starting to panic. But I know that I know that I had a praying church in the name of Jesus. I had praying people. I had Jesus on my side. For whatever battles that you face, church, all you got to say, for this I have Jesus. Oh, glory to God. You know, it was just amazing. It's, it's been, what, that was in 2001, and still that testimony is still alive today. You know, there, it's, a, it's two days of testing. And it's, 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 gen, it's, it's two days from 9 a.m. till 5 p.m. And the, next, and the second day from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. The first day are 200 multiple choice questions. By the time you get to number 50, your head is... And it's time. You don't have all the time in the world. You have a minute and 33 seconds to answer each question. So it's, it's a lot of pressure. It's something that I could have never done on my own. But for whatever, that battle, I had Jesus. I woke up, I went to bed, and you generally need to take a prep course. Even though you, you just graduated law school, there are all these prep courses that you have to take. If the, studies show that if you don't take those prep courses, you're likely to not do well on the bar. I didn't have the money to take any. Those, I took one prep course that lasted two days. Three days, I'm sorry. I didn't have the money to take the prep courses. At the time, each prep course cost $3,000. The bar exam itself at that time, I'm sure it's more now, cost $1,000. So it's a huge investment that you're making. And it's given twice a year. So if you fail, you got to wait six more months to take it. So it's, it's a big deal. You know, I got on my knees the day, I, I got through the first day, I got on my knees that day. The multiple choices, at least you have five choices and, you know, you, you select, if you, you know, if you don't know the answer, you pick one. But the second day, I think, is the hardest because it's, a, it's the essay questions. You have 12 essays and they tell you about a whole scenario it's a long scenario, and then they tell you what sort of rights. So you have to really know the law and how to apply it. If you misinterpret something in the, the law, there were 22 subjects. I woke up the second day. I woke up early. I took it down in, in um, Springfield. I woke up that morning, like three, 4 in the morning. I wake up early to study, and I said, Lord, this is just too much. Too much subjects. There's 22 for me to get. And for that portion, I had not taken um, a prep course. For the, for the multiple choice, I took a three-day prep course. For the multiple choice, I mean for the second day. And I just woke up and I said, God, just direct me to open, to study things that are going to be needed during this exam. I got to the exam. There were exactly two whole essays on estates. And that's what I had studied. Estates. How awesome is that? <laughs> I mean, oh my God. Two essays on the things that I had put in most of my time. Just the mercy of God. After the test is over, it's, it's, the, it's the last, is in July, you got to wait till December to get your results. And every day I'm claiming, Lord, I pass. Lord, I pass. But, you know, I was weak. At the end of the day, I passed the Massachusetts bar exam. One try in the name of Jesus. Not my strength. His strength. This is a store of blessing that God had for me. A store of blessing that God had for me. All of those years that I thought were wasted. All of those frustrations. All of those things, I've seen God come through time after time in my life. God has blessed me with a beautiful home, a home that I wouldn't be able to get on my own, a stored up blessing just waiting for me. I haven't worked in over one year, 
and my mortgage has not gone into foreclosure. Store that blessing for me. I am here proclaiming that I don't know how it's going to happen, but I know that my home is going to be paid off in the name of Jesus. Because I know that what God has done in the past, he will do it again and better. Always before the breakthrough, there's big opposition. I just want you to hang in there and continue to claim the blessing. Claim it every day. You say, you know what? I don't care what is going on. I know that God said that he has me in the palm of his hands. That no weapon formed against me shall ever prosper. That I will be blessed in the land. That God is going to bless the work of my hands. That my children are blessed. That I'm healed. Breakthrough is coming. The word of the Lord says, say that I'm blessed. Don't think it. You can walk around all day thinking under your breath that I'm blessed. When you say it, you bring it to life. You speak it into existence. The word of the Lord says his children will be powerful in the land. Oh, glory to God. Just like in the vineyard, people criticize. People were not happy. They were murmuring. I can't believe they're getting the same pay as me. But the favor of God doesn't depend on what people say or do. God's mercy doesn't depend on who likes you or who doesn't like you. When you know these things, church... You can walk around with your head up and know that your Redeemer lives. I want to leave you with Genesis 50, 12 this morning. Are you feeling blessed this afternoon, church? Oh, glory to God. Are you receiving it this morning? Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. The word of the Lord says... In Genesis 50, 20, you intended to harm me, but God intended it all for my good. Do you receive that this morning? You can say to the enemy, you intended to harm me, but God is turning it around into favor, into breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. You intended to harm me, but God intended it to bless me. Oh, breakthrough. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Even though you started delay, God doesn't say, I'm cutting your pay. If you start making decisions that honor God, he will start to release blessings into your life. He will take you to where you need to be. Amen? God said, you know what? All the days of your life, I will through. How many of us know that God promised us that we would lend and not borrow. And when, when, when the enemy comes trying to confuse you, when the enemy comes trying to talk you out of what God's best, you just say, you know what? Favor is not fair. It's the mercy of God. Do you receive it this morning, church? Hallelujah. You know, as we sung that song, I, I, I wonder how many of us really believe sometimes we need to be still and know that he is God. Sometimes you need to cover your quiet time and know and understand that he is God. He's God who watches all over you. This song I love so much. When the oceans rise and the tides roar, I will soar with you about the storm. Father, you are king over the flood. He's the king over your, the flood of your life. I will be still and know you are God. Find rest, my soul, in Christ alone. Know his power in quietness and trust. When the oceans rise and the thunder roar, I will soar with you about the storm. Father, you are king 
over the flood. I will be still and know you are God. Your joy, O oh Lord, will be my strength. Renouncing fear, we stand in your glorious grace. <clears throat> when the oceans rise and the thunders roar, I will soar with you above the storms. Father, you are king over the flood. I will be still and know that you are God. What a wonderful words to say, that we will be still and know that he is God. Even in the midst of the storm, even in the midst of the bad, bad news and in in, in all the things that are going around in our homes, in our lives, we need to be still and know that he is God. Be blessed this morning, church. Do you receive it? Let us stand this morning. Hi, I'm Craig Matheson, pastor of Changing Lives Christian Church here in Haverhill, Massachusetts. Just for a couple of minutes, I'd just like to offer you a couple of free booklets. Being that you're viewing us today, we just want to tell you we really appreciate you. We thank you for watching our services on tele community television and on YouTube, as well as through the internet through our website. The first booklet I wrote just a little while ago is called, Are You Going to Heaven When You Die? This booklet explains the plan of salvation. It explains what the Bible says concerning having a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. You know, the Bible tells us over in the book of Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, that if you confess that Jesus is your Lord and believe in your heart that God has risen from the dead, you will be saved. The Bible tells us and encourages us to have that personal relationship with God. In fact, there's no way that we can get to heaven after we die without having a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. The second thing is, after we have that, after we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and we have that personal relationship with God, obviously we have to go ahead and cultivate that relationship. How do we do that? One of the very things that is very, very important is attending a local church. I wrote a second booklet called, Why Should I Go to Church? And I'd like to send you these two free booklets, postage paid. We're not going to put you on a mailing list or anything like that. We just want to simply get these booklets into your hands to be a blessing to you, being that you're viewing us here in television. You know, the whole purpose of Changing Lives Christian Church is to go ahead and preach the gospel to every creature, as the Bible says. To let everybody know about the good news about God, the good news about the plan of salvation, the good news about receiving Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Many people in the day we live in are looking for a purpose. What is the purpose in life? How come I get this empty feeling deep down within my soul? How come I can't seem to have that joy that I've always longed to have? The only way we're going to have that is to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And so I just want to give you some, that good news, and I want to offer you these two free booklets that I've written, postage paid. We feel led of the Lord to do this at this particular time in our ministry. And you can request these booklets three different ways. Number one, you can either send us a letter, Changing Lives Christian Church, 17 Newcomb Street, Haverhill, Massachusetts. The zip code here is 01830. Or you can email us, very simply, at info at changinglivesChristianChurch.com. Or you can just give us a call at 978-373-7373. And if you get the voicemail, just leave your name and address, and we'll be sure that we send these booklets out to you as soon as possible. Are you going to heaven when you die? A challenging question. And this is a booklet, How to Get to Heaven According to the Word of God, According to the Bible. Secondly, why should I go to church? May God bless you, and I pray that you have a fantastic day.